Nigeria earned $34.22 billion from oil and gas sector in 2019, says NATI report. Nigeria's external reserves fall by $1.4 billion in two months, according to latest information from the Central Bank of Nigeria. The International Monetary Fund say the Nigerian economy is recovering fast amid COVID-19. Plus, federal government bond yields experience unexpected crash. This and more on Business Express reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. Good to have you join us at this particular point in time. I will start by telling you that Nigeria earned a total sum of $34.22 billion from the oil and gas sector in 2019. The figure represents an increase of 4.88% over the $32.63 billion revenue netted from the sector in 2018. A breakdown of the earnings showed that payments by companies accounted for $18.9 billion, while inflows flows from Federation sales of crude oil and gas accounted for $15.32 billion. These information are contained in the 2019 Oil and Gas Industry Audit Report conducted by the Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NATI. The report showed that 10 years, that is 2010 to 2019, aggregate financial flows from the oil and gas sector to government amounted to $418.544 billion, with the highest revenue flow of $68.442 billion recorded in 2011, while the highest or the lowest revenue flow of $17.055 billion was recorded in 2016. According to NATI, total crude oil production in 2019 was recorded an increase of 4.87%, while total crude oil lifted in 2019 saw a 4.93% increase. Well, there is a ray of hope for the people of Nasarawa and communities of neighboring states and the FCT as the federal government sustained commitment to completing power substation that will improve electricity supply. Aliu Tijani Mohamed reports that more than three years since its foundation stone was laid, the project is to be inaugurated in September this year. Before now, the people of Lafia at best have what you call candlelight. Now with this uh, substation completed, every part of Nasara West will have access to electricity. As long as there is power on the grid, they will have access to uh, electricity. The, the immediate impact you will see in the fact that um, industries... The International Monetary Fund IMF say the Nigerian economy has started to gradually recover from the negative effects of the COVID-19 global pandemic as the country exited recession very fast. An IMF team led by Ms. Jasmine Roman after a week-long virtual meeting with the Nigerian authorities from June 1 to 8, 2021, pointed out that employment level continues to fall dramatically and together with other socioeconomic indicators is far below pre-pandemic levels. The team, however, noted that with the recovery in oil prices, 
and remittance flows, the strong pressures on the balance of payments have somewhat abated, although imports are rebounding faster than exports and foreign investor appetite remains subdued, resulting in continued forex shortage. Ms. Rahman, in a statement, observed that tax revenue collections are gradually recovering, but with fuel subsidies resurfacing, additional spending for COVID-19 vaccines, and, the address, and to address security challenges, the fiscal deficit of the consolidated government is expected to remain elevated at 5.5% of GDP. The mission recommended stepping up efforts to strengthen tax administration to mobilize additional revenues and help address priority spending pressures. The mission also recommended maintaining the momentum towards fully unifying all exchange rate windows and establishing a market clearing exchange rate on monetary policy. The mission recommended integrating the interbank and debt markets and using central bank or government bills of short maturity as the main liquidity management tool instead of cash reserve requirements. And moving on, Nigeria's external reserves fell by $1.4 billion in two months, according to latest information from the Central Bank of Nigeria. The reserves, which stood at $35.25 billion as of April 2021, fell to $34.23 billion by May 31st, dollars of June. The CBN in its January economic report posited that the decline being witnessed was a consequence of lower foreign exchange yields. Meanwhile, Nara strengthens across forex markets as speculators react to reports of CBN funding. Meanwhile, FG bond yields experience unexpected crash due to persistent short covering by traders, which triggered a rally across the entire bond yield curve. Let's see how the Naira is faring against other major currencies. The World Bank early this week in a report released on the Nigerian economy said 7 million Nigerians slipped into poverty last year. Key concerns are inflation, rising cost of food and unemployment. Job creation has remained of utmost importance to government. But of course, these jobs wouldn't be coming from the government. The private sector remains where they would come from as government continues to provide enabling environment. Toyin Alasi is the CEO of Moneywise International. She joins me to look at investment and wealth creation in combating poverty. Toyin, you're welcome to Thank Business Express. Thank you for Express. having me. Thank you. Well, you will agree with me that since the pandemic yeah. set in, there has been uh, monetary as well as fiscal interventions by government to spur uh, economic activities across the country. Some say these interventions are enough, some say they are not enough, some say give us loans, some say give us uh, grants. What's the difference between credit and grants in investment? Okay, well, um, when it's a credit, you have to pay back. When it's a grant, you, you don't need to pay back, all right? So when they give you credit, you need to pay back. But when it's a probably um, a grant from an international body or the government says we're supporting business, most of the time you don't have to pay back the grant. The great credit, you have to pay back if you get it from the bank or whatever way you sort your, source your credit, yeah. Agreed. The CBN uh, embarked on a lot of interventions. Yeah. Where they give credit, they will say yeah. single digit. Most yeah. of it for surviving COVID, for to survive the COVID nineteen pandemic, yeah. it was like five percent yeah. from some sort of nine yeah. percent. In your own view, do we what which of it do we need more? Or smaller businesses, MSMEs need more to survive. Is it the grant or the credit? Well, um, funding generally for any business to survive. 
particularly in um, stringent economic times like this, the, like the COVID time and post-COVID era. You need um, loans, you need credits, whatever source of funding any business can get is very, very necessary because the engine room of any business or the engine of the business is actually cash flow. So for us to have keep cash in the business, you need funding to keep coming in, either through sales, which is organic growth, or you get a loan. It could be a grant, it could be a loan that you have to pay back. Okay, the IMF and World Bank is actually surprised that Nigeria is recovering faster than expected from the effect of the pandemic. As an expert in this field, what sort of investments do you think people should go into to support, to further support more like a speedy growth? Yeah, I would say people should go into um, investment in the areas where um, the economy is booming. For example, you know, during the COVID pandemic, people still had to, had to eat, right? People still had to um, drink water and all of those things. So if you're looking for another source of income, I would say that you should go into investments in areas where there is a need. Um, there, I mean, there were several businesses that didn't survive COVID. Why? They were not necessary at the time. People could do without them. But things like food, clothing, water, people, had to buy those things to survive. So if you're looking to do any business, to grow economic activities, make sure it is something that people need. Because when you do a business or invest in something that people don't need, you're likely to lose the business when there are uh, major economic um, situations like we had last year. So um, look for things that people really need, create that solution, come up with it, and start to sell it to people. That's how to, those are the kind of businesses that I would advise you go to. Of course, another way you can invest is in stocks. So during the COVID pa pandemic, for example, you would notice that the stocks of many um, companies, companies crashed. Yeah. yeah, so that's a good time to buy, particularly for companies that you can tell that they're already high, say 15 error, and then they crash to 15. The likelihood that they're going to pick up when things get back on track is very high. So that's a good time to buy. But most of the time, the reason a lot of people can't cash in on that opportunity is because they're not prepared for times like that. People just leave on the go, no preparation. So the people who actually benefit the most through um, challenging times like this are people who are financially prepared to take opportunities in trying times like that. Okay, talking about the times that we're in, yeah. which you refer to as the trying times, yeah. though we are recovering, yeah, we're recovering. A, a bit faster. Another opportunity that is on board now is the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, the continental market, where Nigeria has a huge market share. How can we, Nigerians, leverage on the opportunities to, to bridge this inequality gap that we experience? Well, I think we need to keep... Um, Nigerians have been found to... Um, recover to go through hard times and still bounce back. Which Spirit are, of resilience. <laughs> <laughs> we are very resilient people. Yes. We, are, we, we, don't, we don't give up. It's like, you know, the slogan that says we die here, things like that. We have that resilience. So whatever we need to do to keep leveraging, we have to continue to do. We can't afford to be laid back. We can't afford to give up. We can't afford to say, no, these are the challenges going on. I'm not going to try. No, we keep pushing through the times, yeah. Well, a whole lot of Nigerians, like you said, we are resilient, they are ingenious and all of that. We have a whole lot of young people with a whole lot of ideas. But funding, the finances are slim. It can never be enough. Mm, yeah. How can we grow wealth as small business owners, as Nigerians who are interested in financing good ideas that are marketable? Yeah, um, one of the major things I like to share, there are many of them ways you can grow wealth, but the one I would like to focus on because um, of the times we're in is majorly um, management, financial management, which is some, I could say, expense management. Because you see, um, when I was at the bank, um, I found out that um, the organizations like that do a lot of things that most small businesses don't do in their businesses. Now, I found out that the reasons that those companies are also thriving today are because of the principles that they have applied over the years and when you read from founders of such organizations you find out that these are the principles through which they have lived over the years so some uh, take for example when I was at the bank the bank just decided that okay we're cutting down on stationary costs and the cost of um, toiletries it looked a very 
um, funny. It, it seems like an insig insignificant aspect of the business, particularly for an organization that no matter what's going on, even when TSA happened and all government funds were moved directly from banks, never went down in income. Yet, they told us that they were cutting down on stationaries and toiletries. And when they cut down, it looked like hell was going to break loose, but nothing happened. Everybody adjusted. We found out that um, the moment they said, this department, you have to use a pack of um, um, stationary for the week. We then came up with strategies to manage resources better. So what I said all of that to say this, if organizations at that level do manage resources, you as a small business to survive in this trying time, you have to have your eyes on the figures. If they weren't tracking things, if they were not monitoring the figures, they would not have an idea how much goes into things like that. So it is important. At some point they came and said they were halving the costs for end of year um, hampers and all of that. Whatever you need to do to survive, you have to do. And these are major organizations that their income is not dropping. So if you want to thrive as a small business, you need to look inwards. First of all, how can I yeah, I need to manage expenses. There's a saying in accounting that if um, profit is not, income is not increasing or revenue is not increasing, expense has to be very low. So there's no use bringing in all the monies and then you don't know how it's going out. The secret or the key to keeping your business alive in trying economic times is to monif monitor the flow of cash in and out of your business. Wow. COVID-19 came with challenges as well as opportunities. A lot of people moved from the physical space of marketing or buying yeah. and selling to the digital the dig space. Yeah. As the opportunity abounds, so is the risk. Talking about financial crimes, people are being scammed a lot. People oh. want to make money. They want to invest in a whole lot of things. Then some other people out there are cashing in on such opportunities yeah. and scamming people. Yeah. How can people safeguard themselves from such practices? First and foremost is you need to verify. The secret to success with investing is to, the first step to investing actually, is to investigate. Never invest in something that you don't know details about. So don't be, you know, the reason a lot of people fall for these camps is because they are greedy themselves. Wow. Yeah, that tendency is in everybody. If you don't check it, you will always fall for these things. So um, why do you want to make quick returns? It's greed, so they play on that, and of course they know that they have their own markets. They will always get some people. But if you're smart, you know that no, no investment. I mean, the government investments are like a benchmark for any other investment you're watching. So the stock market is there, the treasury bonds, bills, and all of that are there to guide where you invest. So if you see any investment giving you X unreasonable return, and you can't even tell the kind of business they do, you don't have their office locations, you haven't investigated anything, please stay away. The key is to stay away. Just stay away from them. The first steps to invest in, I, I always say this, most people don't have investments in um, something like treasury bill. They don't have a secure basket at all. Yet, they want to go into the risk Risky terrain, well, like it's short it, term and, 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 and quick, quick money. Quick, yes, quick the returns risk is on investment. exactly, and the risk is high. But they don't even ask, a lot of people don't even assess their risk appetite to know if I lose this money, I hope I'll be able to survive. Things like that you need to check. So if you know that it's going to promise you too much return, pull back. And then another way to secure yourself is to get the help of a financial and expert in the field like who you, can guide you. Like like you. Yeah. Well, the key word is before you invest. You you invest in. investigate. Thank you so very much, Toyin, Alassi CEO, MoneyWise International, Thank you very much for, for giving us me. insights into financial management. Thank you very much for having me. Well, moving on, Nigeria is set to join 191 countries across the world to showcase culture, technology, innovation, creativity, and human excellence in the biggest world expo in the Arab world, holding in Dubai from October 2021 to March 2022 with the theme, Connecting Minds, Creating the Future. Minister of State, Industry, Trade, and Investment disclosed this at a media roundtable in Abuja. I'm glad to inform you that Nigeria has completed content curation process, procurement of exhibits and commercial retail items, and shipping of artifacts to Dubai. In the meantime, internal installation is ongoing. It is pertinent also to note that Nigeria has scheduled 23 customized events, including a trade and investment forum, musical concerts, women in laughter, football friendly, 
Adire and Other Fabrics Fashion Show, Women in Film, Art of Recycling, Cultural Performance, Dance Shows, and Find Your Place in the Food Chain, amongst others. 1.5 billion US dollars worth the contract has been awarded to SME and accounts for 54% of the businesses registered with Expo. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture is collaborating with the Nigerian Export Promotion to further Nigerian agricultural produce into the international markets. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development says necessary support is being given to ensure quality and meet international market standard. Necessary support is being given for increase in export of agricultural commodity like sesame seeds, hibiscus, cotton and sorghum. The Nigerian Expo, Export Promotion Council has been working with the Ministry of Agriculture to exploit our strategic advantage in the production of these commodities, improving our production protocols to conform with internationally acceptable standards, maintenance of an export directory and export certification verification, for generation of product map and improving our visibility through attendance of international trade fair shows. All this is geared toward improving our export profile, improving our forex earning capacity, which is necessary in this period of oil market. Let's take a trip to the commodities market. The Securities and Exchange Commission SEC say it will roll out a regulatory incubation program for fintechs operating or seeking to operate in the Nigerian capital market. The regulatory incubation program is designed to address the needs of new business models and processes that require regulatory authorization to continue carrying out full or ancillary technology-driven capital market activities. The RI program has has thus been conceived as an entry measure to aid the evolution of effective regulation which accommodates the innovation by fintechs without compromising market integrity and within limits that ensure investor protection. It will operate by admitting identified fintech business models and processes in cohorts for a one-year period. It's the third straight day of gain on the Nigerian stock market as the market closed the week's trading on a positive note. The NGX All Share Index gained 0.09% to close at 88,648.92 basis points. Investors exchanged 220.6 million shares in 2,952 deals valued at 2 0.528 billion naira market capitalization rose to 20.1 trillion naira and on the global market update is next with neka oko stocks were stranded below record highs on friday in europe with investors left looking for direction after digesting the u.s federal reserve's more hawkish stance Germany's DAX slipped 0.3% in early trade, with London's FTSE dropping 0.43% to lead losses, while CAC 40 of France added 0.12%. Stocks in Asia were also mixed on Friday as investors watched for market moves in the commodity sector after a recent tumble in prices triggered by a strengthening of the US dollar. In Japan, the Nikkei 225 closed 0.19% lower at 28000 964.08, the Shanghai Composite was marginally lower at 3,525.10, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index rose about 0.85% as of its final hour of trading. U.S. equities were little changed on Friday.
Friday as markets try to rebound from a losing week for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The Dow lost four points, the S&P 500 was flat, and Nasdaq 100 gained 0.2%. In Africa, most stocks traded in negative territory in early trade, with Nairobi's all share leading losses, while Tunisia's Tonidex posted gains. That's Global Markets. I'm Neka Oko. That wraps this edition of Business Express. Remember to keep in touch with us. Do send us on your comments, observations, and suggestions. Also be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTA's channel. Business Express returns Monday at 3 p.m. Be safe out there. I am Benny Adams saying enjoy your weekend.